Good afternoon and welcome to the sixth annual Benjamin and Marion Kremen virtual scholarship reception. My name is Elizabeth Mendez. I'm the life enrichment manager here at the terraces at San Joaquin Gardens. This afternoon, we're continuing the legacy of Dr. Benjamin and Marion Kremen. Due to the pandemic, we were unable to have this reception last year, but now we're back in a modified format, which many of you are quite familiar with. Joining us today from San Joaquin Gardens is TSJG's new executive director, Sean Rushforth. And we also have 36 residents in our holiday theater and many other TSJG residents joining us via Zoom. I'd also like to give a special thank you to the Terrace's executive chef, Mike Shackelford and his extraordinary team for the delicious appetizers created from fresh produce and ingredients from the local Gibson market that we have for the residents. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the late Dr. Bud Richter and Beverly Knobloch. Their passing reminds us of the contribution to both Fresno State as well as the Terrace's community. Dr. Richter was a big part of this annual event he greatly valued students and their endeavors to become future leaders, but also contributed significantly to the planning of the Teachers and Friends of Education Honor Wall that sits in front of the Kremen School of Education and Human Development at Fresno State. In addition, Bud and his wife, Jan, established the Richter Awards of Excellence in Education in honor, to honor faculty and staff for their service. Beverly Knobloch, a Fresno native and Fresno State alumni, had an extensive career as a teacher, counselor, and a vice principal within the Fresno Unified School District. Beverly and her husband, Earl, were immensely invested in the growth of Fresno State and contributed greatly to agricultural education and research. They funded the creation of the robotics laboratory in the J Jordan Agricultural Research Center. The Knobloch's gave continued support to the Gibson Farm Market, which was named in honor of Beverly's parents. The Fresno State community and TSJG family will miss the presence of Bud and Beverly, but their legacy will forever be remembered through their generosity and service. Now I'd like to pass this over to Laura Clark, the Director of Development from the Kremen School of Education. Good afternoon. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining us. So a lot of you guys know the rules, but I'm just going to help you out just for a second. Here are the guidelines. Of course, you're going to remain on mute during the presentation and use the chat feature to express congratulations, celebrate the students, or to make comments about what you're hearing. You also might want to set your screen to speaker view for the best experience. We have a number of people joining us this afternoon, as you have heard. You have met those from the terraces at San Joaquin Gardens but I would like to introduce some folks from Fresno State. You may notice that some of our participants have a special background. These are the students who we are celebrating. That's the red background. These are all our scholarship recipients. Then of course we have friends and family of those being honored. Finally, the staff and faculty who make it happen. Now I'd like to introduce you to the new Dean of the Kremen School of Education and Human Development, Dr. Randy Yarick. Thank you everybody for coming here. Uh, I'm glad that no one's gonna say you're on mute because <laughs> I hear that every single day. So welcome, I'm sorry we can't be in the same place, uh, but I'm so glad that you all came and congratulations to all of our recipients. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to all of you this afternoon and let you, uh, let you meet some of the other people who are some familiar faces and some not so familiar faces. The rest of the staff and faculty here at Fresno State. Dr. Godfrey is my associate dean. Dr. Song Lee is a professor and internship coordinator for counselor education and rehabilitation. Sam Ray is our communication specialist and a specialist for graphics and working with the communications team on the videos. I'm sure Sam was the one who created those wonderful backgrounds for all of you recipients. We also have uh, Heather McDowell, our development coordinator, who's basically the person behind the scenes in coordination with Elizabeth, making this all reception happen. Uh, of course, there uh, are hardworking counseling faculty who Dr. Lee are gonna introduce in just a moment. In my first year at Fresno State as the Dean of the Kremen School of Education and Human Development, I've been looking forward to this reception and meeting not only the scholarship recipients, but our friends at the terraces in the San Joaquin Gardens. Your time and your support and encouragement are greatly appreciated. 
You're about to hear from both Keith Komsky as well as Dr. Robert Monkey, who both exemplify the dedication and the hard work that moved Kremens, that moved the Kremens to make this an ongoing uh, bequest. So I'd like to introduce to both of you, to uh, both the Director of Financial Services for Fresno State Foundation. There's too many Fs in that sentence, I'm so sorry. The Director of Financial Services for Fresno State Foundation, Keith Komsky, and Professor Dr. Meridai, Dr. Bob Monkey, to look on the genesis of this event. Welcome to all. Keith, you're muted. I had to do that. <laughs> Sorry, Dean Eric. Thank you so much for the introduction and welcome to all of you. I'm the Director of Financial Services for the Fresno State Foundation. We manage the endowed gift that was generously given to us by the Kremens. And I also wanted to uh, introduce a video where we sat down with Dr. Monkey to learn more about how this event came to be. I was a, a counselor educator and I, I, uh, I taught methods and, and theory a little bit, but mostly methods and I established a uh, counseling lab for practicum, which was very much needed and that was helpful. Well, I met Dr. Kremen when I applied. And he was very friendly, very nice, open guy and had a great sense of humor. Well, he was the program coordinator, so he arranged uh, who taught where, when, and, and he was hired specifically to uh, to develop a K-12 guidance, counseling and guidance program. He retired in 1976, and he stayed connected with, with the university, which which was a nice thing that he did that. But, and, and we were building buildings at that time. You know, we're getting his plans together. I, I showed him the approved plans. He was he came to my office a number of times. And, and how is that going to fit with counseling and, and all those kinds of neat things? And, and we, we talked a lot about the building. I took him through the whole building, five stories, everything. They loved it. So I was glad I did that. So I, I stayed with Marion, and I visited him a lot prior to his death, but I stayed with her and, and visited her a number of times. She was talking about, it would be nice if I could go back up to uh, Yosemite, and I said, why don't I take you? So I did that. We had a great visit. We spent a day up there and came back, and she loved it. And, and a little further down the road, I just said, well, why don't you go to another park? We go to Kings Canyon and, and Sequoia, and oh, that's a pretty nice setup too. And she, she, she jumped on that too right away. So I took her up there, but I kept her connected with the institution. She said, uh, I've decided to give most of my estate to the, to the university. And then, and then she went down more specifically you know, to the School of Education and even more specifically to the counseling and guidance program. And I'd, I'd like to have re recognized Ben for all he's done as, as a pioneer in, in uh, counselor education for all he's done in support of all that to, to give students an opportunity to get a, a school counseling credential. And so I'd like to fund them, give them uh, money for do that. It changed the name of the school, the Benjamin and Marion uh, School of Education and Human Development. That's a mouthful, but that's that's definitely gave them recognition forever with, with that name change. It's so nice for students to have scholarships, and these are large scholarships, and, and that way you can pretty much focus on your coursework Life's a lot better when you go to school. We're a nice couple and I, I applaud Ben. He was gonna develop a, a counseling program for K-12 and he did that and did a good job. He was well respected. So now I'd like to introduce another video where I was interviewed to talk a little bit about how this generous donation is managed 
by the Fresno State Foundation and leads to these scholarships. So the Fresno State Foundation is a recognized auxiliary. It's a separate 501c3 nonprofit organization designed to support the Fresno State campus. It was founded uh, in the 1930s. It is governed by a 35 member board of governors who are community members. And I have been in my role as the director of finance for the foundation for about 16 years now. Dr. Marion Kremen made a generous testamentary gift, meaning she put it in her estate as a planned gift. And it was a, a large endowed gift. And the way an endowment works is an endowed gift is made where the income from the endowment is to provide scholarships, but the gift itself or the corpus is never to be spent. So this allows a large gift to remain in perpetuity and to be invested in our endowment pool. This gift was made to support a program that Dr. Kremen had passion for. It's for graduate students who are pursuing a uh, career in high school and other school counseling guidance counselors. For our most recent fiscal year of June 30, 2020, this endowment's market value has generated over $92,000 to support this year's scholars. And over the years since 2014, when this gift became invested, it's generated over $570,000 of gifts to support these uh, important programs. I've learned to call it the gift that keeps on giving because it's one thing to give 5,000 or $10,000 to have uh, a scholarship program paid out over one or two years. But if you give an endowed gift of, of 25,000 or more, that will give in perpetuity. So uh, I just want to thank the, uh, the Fresno State Foundation Board of Governors, as well as the Kremen School for their ability to select the scholars and certainly the transformative gift by Dr. Kremen to make this all possible. Thank you, Keith and Dr. Monkey. Now we'd like to introduce to you a resident who is also a faculty emeritus, Dr. Bob Kittredge. When uh, Diane and I moved in to the terraces, uh, it was about 2013, I discovered uh, the terraces had a partnership with Fresno State. And part of that partnership uh, was uh, the hosting uh, here at the terraces uh, of an event every year uh, that honored the uh, scholarship recipients. Uh, these were for counseling scholarships uh, over in the Talladega Theater. And so I uh, started going, you know, each year I would, uh, I would go to that event. I really enjoyed uh, meeting the, the new crop of uh, soon-to-be counselors. Uh, and also uh, it was a chance to reconnect with uh, people that I had known in the School of Education. So many activities go on at Fresno State, my gosh. My wife and I used to go out there for many things. Uh, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, President Castro when he first came in. And of course, I was very impressed with him. And all the all those programs that were started by him, well, not by him, uh, actually, I think his wife had more to do with, with uh, several of them. No, so they, they were doing some impressive things. And I, uh, I liked, I followed, you know, what was going on. And, I've always had one foot in the, when I was at the university, one foot in the university, one foot in the, uh, uh, in the community. And uh, I was still able to, to do that and still uh, also live here and then and also have the relationship with, the, uh, with Fresno State, which I think was a, quite a novel idea also.
And now I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Song Lee with this afternoon's main event. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my privilege to um, call out our recipients. But first of all, thank you so much for being here with us to celebrate our students. Um, and thank you to the Kremens and Dr. Monkey, you're my role model. Um, I, you know, I, I'm glad that you were able to join us today. Um, before we announce the recipients, I just want to acknowledge the counseling faculty that's here with us. Uh, Dr. G uh, Dominica Griffin, if you could wave when I call your name, she is the school counseling uh, coordinator. And then Dr. Uh, Gitima Sharma, she's also a school counseling faculty member. Dr. Yelena's Castillo is also a counseling faculty. And Dr. Shua Sua Shong, I think I see him. Um, Dr. Janelle Pitt cannot be here, but she sends her best. And we also have our fabulous April Cardiel. She's our staff member and um, she's a huge support to our students. I'm glad that they are here um, to help all of us celebrate our students. This year we have 11 scholarship recipients and these are scholarship recipients who have a passion for school counseling, um, who has also a 4.0. Um, and so they are at the top of the top of our group of students and scholarship recipients when I call your name if you can wave as you can see they are all in that all of those uh, red boxes except for one um, but when I call your name please wave and uh, also if I mispronounce your name just call me out later not right now okay so first Osmara Bautista Cheryl Sardique, Sylvia Gavasio Hakes, Sarah Pereira, Miguel Carrasso, Jasmine Laura, Jennifer Groves, she's not able to be here with us today, John Castellanos. Tanya Narvas Vargas, Tanya Sanchez, and Karina Ibarra. So before I have four of those students speak, um, congratulations to all of you. We are all very proud of you. Um, but for now, I wanted to kind of share the stories behind these students um, by giving you a glimpse into four of them. So if I can have John Castellano speak first. Good afternoon. First, I'd like to start by saying that it is my pleasure to be speaking in front of all of you. My name is John Castellanos and I'm a Hispanic, Mexican-American first generation student. My parents were born in Mexico and they immigrated to the United States for a better life. They had no education and struggled to help me growing up. They wanted to help me when I showed frustration with assignments, but they didn't know how. Growing up, I never, I was never academically focused. I had average grades, behavioral issues, and moved schools a lot. I was led to this path of becoming a school counselor both directly and indirectly. I was led to the school counseling path indirectly because I grew up Catholic and I always had the mindset to help others without expecting anything in return. My parents were involved with the church and organized events and volunteered time in the help of others, which allowed me to develop a passion for helping my community. I was also directly led to this path when I realized I had no plans after high school. With the path I was on, I wasn't sure if I would focus on looking for work or if I would attend college because of my low GPA. I then remembered when I was young, my mom had talked to me about attending the university. I decided to focus academically during my junior year to raise my GPA to increase my chances of applying for college. I ended up improving my GPA that year and I realized I would be able to apply to Fresno State. I knew I wanted to attend, attend a university, but as a first generation student, I wasn't sure how. In my senior year, I decided to go to the counseling office every day to check in with everyone and obtain information I needed to achieve my goal. I was thankful for the school counseling office, the help the school counseling office provided and I realized I would like to be able to help students as I was helped. I've had the experience of working with preschool to 12th grade students while also working with special education and continuation school students. No matter what grade levels I end up working with, I aspire to be someone students could look to for guidance to help them with their academic, career, and social emotional development. Uh, this scholarship would be used as my motivation and reassurance that I'm on the right path, and I hope to make Dr. Benjamin and Marion Kremen proud of my accomplishments as an educator and an inspiring school counselor. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, John. Now can I have Tanya Sanchez speak? Yes, thank you, John. Hello, everyone. My name is Tanya Sanchez, and I'm honored to be here to be recognized at the, as a recipient of the Dr. Benjamin and Marion Kremen Scholarship. I'm currently in my first year in the school counseling program and will be graduating next spring. I chose to pursue school counseling after obtaining experience working in the field of education. Working with students and seeing how I can make a difference in their lives made me confident that this is the right career path for me. From the simple joy of receiving emails from students thanking me to the long-term connections I have made throughout my time here at Fresno State, my journey through this program has been a rewarding experience. Receiving this scholarship means that I am much closer to my goal of increasing representation in our education system. I hope to also encourage my students to overcome boundaries and strive towards greatness, just as Mrs. Marion Kremen aimed to accomplish as well as throughout her teaching career and Dr. Benjamin Kremen did at, when he established our education master programs. Receiving this scholarship also means that I will be able to complete my internship and acquire the skills needed to effectively support my students without the stress of not having the funds to cover my tuition and other necessary expenses. I am excited to provide students with the proper guidance and encouragement they will need to be well prepared for lifelong learning and development. I am also proud to be in a field where I will truly be able to make a difference in the lives of others. It is truly an honor to be a recipient of the Dr. Benjamin and Marion Kerman Scholarship. Thank you all and congratulations to all of our recipients Dr. Benjamin and Marion Kerman would be proud to know that these awards are going to be received by hardworking and passionate students who want to make a difference in the field. We will all continue to achieve many great things and continue the legacy that Dr. Benjamin and Marion Kerman left behind. Thank you, Tanya. Now, if I can have Karina Ibarra speak next. Good afternoon, everyone. I am honored to be recognized as a recipient of the Dr. Benjamin and Marion Kremen Scholarship. I would first and foremost like to thank my parents and my husband for their unconditional support when I decided to embark on this journey of becoming a school counselor. I chose the profession of school counseling primarily for my love of education. I am a firm believer that education can be a factor in breaking the generational poverty cycle. From a young age, my parents instilled in me how important education was and how much it could change the course of my life. As a school counselor, I would love to give my students the same opportunity. I would like to provide inspiration and motivation to the students who do not feel like they can be successful in higher education. As a first generation immigrant and a first generation college student, I can attest firsthand that higher education can be attainable to anyone and it can break the generational poverty cycle. I also hope to provide all students the resources they need to be successful for life after high school. The Dr. Benjamin and Marion Kremen Scholarship will help me immensely in my journey to becoming a school counselor. As a recipient of the scholarship, I hope to inspire the youth to continue pursuing their dreams, regardless of their financial circumstances. I also hope to inspire the counseling students after me so that they may also reach for academic achievement and bring their passion into the school counseling profession. I am extremely grateful to all my professors in the program for guiding me and helping me develop my passion for counseling. I am certain that my passion will continue to shine, and I am so excited to see what the future holds for me as a school counselor. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. Our last but not least, Tanya Navas Vargas. Hi, good afternoon to all. It is a pleasure and a great blessing to be able to speak to you today. Thank you for being here. I have not always known that I wanted to be a school counselor. My undergraduate degree is in business administration. After working a few years, I realized this is not what I want to do the rest of my career. I had a feeling that my purpose in life is to do something else. As I contemplated going back to school, I knew the education field was where I wanted to go. I researched my options and here I am. 
being employed full time, married, and with a three year old son at that time and twins on the way, it was tough deciding to go back to school. What if it doesn't work out for me? What if I don't like it? I decided that I would rather give it a try and it not work out than not try it at all. So far, it has been one of the best decisions I have made. I absolutely love this program and I know this is exactly where I need to be. Every individual has a gift and purpose in life. And as a school counselor, I would love to contribute to the journey to happiness and success of the children in our community as they find their purpose and give their gift to the world. I am dedicated to being an advocate for all children. I am specifically interested in advocating for undocumented students and students of undocumented parents, advocating for a multilingual education and advocating to provide financial literacy to students. My husband shared this quote um, from Andy Warhol with me. The idea is not to live forever. It is to create something that will. I will repeat that one more time. The idea is not to live forever. It is to create something that will. This quote explains what the Dr. Benjamin and Marion Kremen scholarship means to me. Dr. Benjamin and Marion Kremen created something that continues to be alive today and allows students like me to fulfill our purpose in life. This scholarship will allow me to work towards this same goal, to create something that will live past my physical years here and not only benefit my children, but all children in our communities. I would like to say thank you to the Kremen family, Kremen administrators, staff, and professors. Thank you to my children, my husband, my siblings, and to my mother and to my father. And thank you to everybody present with us today. I would like to end with a question that is directed to every single one of you. What is your purpose in life? Thank you. Wow, thank you. Thank you to my four speakers. I call them my, because my heart has been touched. So if you've been kind of emotional listening to those, that means your heart is in it too. Um, so let's all applaud this year's recipients for the Dr. Benjamin American Scholarship for Guidance Counselors. We're all very proud of all of you. And now let's turn back to Elizabeth. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. For years, the Terraces at San Joaquin Gardens has had the privilege of partnering with the Kremen School of Education and Human Development in presenting worthy students with scholarships. The financial support provided by the Kremens is a philanthropic example of good stewardship. If you're interested in finding more ways about how you can support these students, please contact Laura Clark at Fresno State. In addition, for those of you that are in our holiday theater, we have the famous frosted creme and butter cookies for you to enjoy. And for those of you all on Zoom, I hope we can all be together again next year to enjoy these cookies as well. Thank you.